Welcome to this product demonstration and training on how to terminate the OCC CAT6A plug on CAT7 type cable. The OCC plug is a two-piece connector. You have a load bar and you have the connector body. Uh, you load the load bar first with the, the cables and stuff and then you insert it into the connector body as we'll demonstrate. Uh, first step is going to be to prepare the cable. I always say that a properly prepared cable is going to eliminate 90% of any sort of field issues. So this is a category 7 cable. I'm going to go ahead and use a strip tool. It's a cigar type, cigar cutter type. I'm going to go ahead and do about two inch strip. It's got a max and a min on the direction. I always want to do minimum when I'm doing shielded cables. I never want to do maximum on shielded cables. I'll do a spin around, pop the jacket, pull it off. Category 7 cable is a little unique in the, de in the construction. It has two different types of layers of shields. You've got a braid shield and then you have a foil shield. They call this design SFTP. So SFTP is outside shielded, foil inside twisted pairs. First thing I want to do is remove the braid shield and I don't want to remove it all because I want to keep a couple strands to use as a drain contact. So I push on it to birdcage it and then I'll use a pair of diagonal cutters and go ahead and trim off the braid. I don't want to trim it all off because I'm going to be using a couple of these strands for a drain wire. So I cut most of them off, pull it off, and I got my leftover strands. I kind of form that into a little pigtail, give it a little twist, get it together, fold it back against the jacket. Now, for best practices with any shielded cable with RJ45 connectors, uh, we recommend putting a little strip of copper tape on the edge of the jacket to capture the drain wire for one and give you a 360 degree ground. So I'm going to take a piece of copper tape. I'm going to go ahead and apply it right at the edge of the jacket. This is 3M1181 copper tape. It has conductive adhesive. You always want to make sure that whatever copper tape you're using does have conductive adhesive. I'm going to go ahead and place the copper tape and just kind of wrap it around the cable. Now I can trim off my excess on the drain wire. Next step is going to be to strip the foil off each of the individual pairs. So I'll separate these out. Each foil has a seam on it, and what I want to do is I want to find the seam, follow it all the way down to the edge of the jacket, and give it a little nip. And then I can go ahead and just twist the foil shield right off. I do not want to untwist the wires at this point, and the reason for that is Category 7 cable, every conductor, you have a white and you have a color. You don't have a white with a stripe, like you do with Category 6 or 6A cables, or Category 5E cables. The reason for this is just the introduction of that dye into that white cable causes the electrical signal to change and will cause the cable to fail. So you're not going to see very many cables with stripes in them. Um, the ones that do have stripes are going to be kind of a little bit toward the lower performance side and you want to have better performance for any sort of high frequency signal. So I strip off my foil shields. I do not untwist the pairs at this point because I do not want to mix up the white wires at all. The load bar is pretty easy. It's got uh, color codes on it. You're going to have a dark and then one with a a lesser ring, so that's going to be the, the different conductors. They call them tip and ring conductors, actually. I'm going to go ahead and do one side at a time. So this one's the brown and the orange. So I'll go ahead and untwist my brown and orange, keeping them together so I don't mix up the white wires. The conductors are going to be huge on Category 7 cable because the dielectric insulation is foamed in order to make the uh, electricals pass. Uh, what I want to do also is I want to nip off the very ends. They get all twisted up when you cut off the cables and stuff. So you want to nip off the ends. Now I'm going to insert this in. There's a little practice to get all four holes lined up at once. Then you can go ahead and push it in a little bit to get it started. Now I'm ready to flip it over and do the other side. Again, I do not want to mix the conductors here, so I keep the pairs separated from each other so I don't get the white wires mixed up. If you nip off the ends, it'll give you a, a nice level surface to try to insert. Once I get them all inserted, now I want to slide them up the cable as far as I can. You want to follow the 
TIA instructions as far as untwisted pairs. You only want to have about less than a half of an inch of, or, or less is better. You go ahead and seat this down. Sometimes you have to help the conductors, give it a little pull. These are very large conductors with the insulation they have on them. Just get them down as close as possible. And once you have these all down, as close as possible, now it's time to crimp this. The way this works is this black piece you see here is a carrier. When I crimp these ends here, this black piece is going to fall off. So I'm going to go ahead and using a tool, I'm going to use the back side. Here, click. You got to do it twice. So I'll give a little click. And then once that's done, your black carrier will fall right off. Double check to make sure everything's crimped all the way. You may have to actually adjust it a little bit if it's not. And once it's crimped all the way down, now you can trim off your conductors. So using diagonal cutters, do them flush cut. Be nice and smooth, all the conductors are cut off. This tab has traces on one side and not traces on the other. With the traces facing down, I'm gonna insert it into the connector body, slide it all the way in until it seats. Once it's seated all the way down, I'm gonna close the back of the connector. Do that with my fingers, you can use a tool too to do it. Copper tape gives you that 360 degree ground, and this black cap here is just a cap. When you pull this off, now you have the RJ45 that you can connect.